women often look for grand gestures to know that a guy has chosen them above all others and is ready to commit. The problem is, him popping the question is the last step of many that take place over time. So today I want to reveal the seven things men stop doing when they know you're the one so you can stop feeling anxious and accurately gauge how close or how far off a guy is from committing to you for life. This video will be helpful for you if you're in one of three situations. Number one, you're single and you want to find out how men who truly have the intention of committing to you for life act and speak. Number two, you're in a relationship and you're not sure based on the way the guy is acting if he's close or far away from reaching that quintessential step of popping the question. Third, you are either in a painful situation or you've been in one before and you want to make sure you understand clearly and unequivocally how to gauge better in the future if a guy has what it takes to be relationship material of the kind who commits to you for life. Now, before I even start, let me just share that these points that I'm sharing today are no substitution for having a clear, non-bullshit conversation at the beginning of the dating process where you can gauge where the guy is headed, what he initially wants, what his final vision for a relationship is. Why? Because many women make the mistake of just reading the signs and they never had the conversation that in the first date could have told them, don't date this guy for the next three years. So first step is going to be always when you connect with a man, figure out before you go on a date with him, kind of what he's going for in a relationship, what he's looking for, what his intentions are not with you, with someone. And if they match, then you can evaluate him through time through the process that I'm about to share with you right now. The first thing that a guy who wants to be in a relationship with you for life will stop doing, it's more of an overarching experience and feeling is he stops trying and he starts doing. He eliminates the, I'm not sure I can do this. And he tests it. He goes for it. He's going to be the type of guy who finds solutions more than problems, who's showing up for you, who's planning the date, who's finding out how to see you and work versus how to do one or the other. Now, everybody has different needs and there's going to be times in his life when he's busier than others, but there's no excuse for a guy who wants a real relationship to not be clear about what's going on and to not make it up if what he really wants is to end up in a long-term lifelong commitment with you. The second thing a guy who's found you to be the one will stop doing is he's going to stop confusing freedom with selfishness. And here's what I mean by that. The selfish definition of freedom is I do what I want, when I want, with whom I want. And if you're a bachelor and intend to be the George Clooney before he got married for the rest of your life, then that's your definition of freedom. But here's what a guy who wants to make you his wife will do. He will start defining freedom on bigger, more bold terms. He'll say to himself, I'm free enough to be loved. I'm free enough to be seen. I'm free enough to be vulnerable. I'm free enough to be courageous. I am not a slave to my impulses. I am in command of the meaning in my life. He's going to go for meaning, for growth, for contribution versus fulfillment and pleasure. Number three, he stops having open loops. What's an open loop? A connection from the past that was never finalized. The girl in the office that flirts with him and he's never gotten a chance to tell he's in a relationship and is lying by omission. A guy who wants you, who found you to be the one, is going to be very clear about what he wants to go for in life and is going to close off shitty avenues that will only distract him from his end goal, which is to be in a real relationship with you. The only positive thing that can come from his open loops, flirting with other women, having friends that don't even know about the relationship or who don't know the intensity of the relationship, is going to be to validate him when he's feeling insecure about himself. And a guy who's reached the stage of wanting to commit to you for life is probably surpassing that stage and is using the connection that he has with you in much stronger ways than multiple sources of validation. So a guy starts closing the loops. He starts disconnecting from human beings who are not adding value to the relationship. He starts becoming clear with people around him, women specifically, that he's in a serious relationship and he stops entertaining weird situations that are not defined and might lend themselves to him in his worst of impulses, making a decision that will ultimately hurt the relationship. The fourth thing he stops doing is he stops avoiding 
commitment focused conversations. Here's the guy who's not even thinking about you or can't commit to a woman for life. He doesn't even answer questions regarding commitment. The next step of that would be a guy who's willing to have conversations with you. You initiate them and he can have them with you. Third step, if he's thinking about you long-term, he starts and initiates those conversations. And the conversations can be about where you might leave, what type of relationship will be done long-term, what type of wedding one day will take place. He doesn't have to ask you for the size of your ring, but he can start asking questions that let you know that he's thinking about merging families, molding lives, leaving the kind of experience that is not just on his own, but takes your needs, your values, your family, your future, your goals, your into consideration. Now, before I share my last three points that are really powerful for you to know about, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet you're not fully aware of the root cause, not the symptoms, while you're still single. What I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every walk of life, every kind of situationship or relationship challenge you can imagine, helping them to attract the love of their lives. And I've put together a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds. I will share with you the number one reason you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description of this video. You'll see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and in 60 seconds, you'll have the answer to the elusive question why you're still single and a custom report based on your specific blind spot will share the number one action you can take starting today to reverse the trend you're on and attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. The fifth thing a guy will stop doing if he's found you to be the one, he's going to stop neglecting self-improvement. That means that he might take that extra class he needs for his progress at work. He might take something like therapy or coaching. He might get some guidance from someone, a mentor who can help him be better emotionally. A guy who is inspired by the relationship. And it doesn't mean he's doing it for you. He's doing it for himself and prompted and instigated and maybe tickled or a little bit kicked in the ass because of the relationship. There's nothing wrong with him becoming a better man as a result of being with you, so long as he knows that self-improvement is a way of life. Self-improvement will allow him and you to grow together versus one of you to take off and leave the other one way behind. The sixth thing that a guy will stop doing is he'll stop avoiding emotional intimacy. He'll stop avoiding difficult conversations. He'll stop avoiding being vulnerable. He'll stop avoiding asking questions that let him know where you're at, how you're feeling, how you're experiencing life, and also how he can add value to your life. Emotional intimacy is a true mark of someone who has the capacity to take the relationship to the next level. Doesn't mean that if he does this, he'll pop the question. It means that without this, you don't want him to pop the question. Why? Because that we're committing to a life of lack of depth, lack of superficiality. So when the guy gets closer to making that decision, he opens his heart more. He asks questions that are more powerful. He holds space for you. He maintains eye contact. He's willing to embrace a space of uncertainty that is vulnerable and raw and scary, but it's so intimate and so powerful. The last thing a guy will stop doing in general, if he wants you, he's chosen you to be the one, is excuses. Any sort of excuses that hurt the relationship. Excuses about time, excuses about space, excuses about selfishness. You see and sense that the guy is even though he's flawed, even though he's afraid, even though he may go into periods or moments of, of questioning himself, that overall, he's a man focused on results, focused on deliverables versus excuses. If you find a guy like this, going deeper in conversation is worth your time and energy. The closer he is to the straits, the closer you are to having that ring. The further away he is from this, the more in a fantasy you are right now that requires some level of intervention. Hope this is helpful, useful, and insightful. If it is, it would mean the world to me and to my channel because this is how I get a chance to grow and help more women. If you click like and subscribe, if you find this helpful, share it with someone you love. And if you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation games or stupid techniques, make sure to go to the next video right here.